Hello, my name's Miss Weatherall and I am Royal Wotton Bassett Academy's lead practitioner for its Holocaust, Genocide and Human Rights programme. As we approach January the 11th and the 25th anniversary of the genocide at Srebrenica in Bosnia, we've set our students, staff, parents and wider community a challenge. Personal challenges adapted from ideas our friends at Remembering Srebrenica shared with us that will help us all come together albeit socially distanced and remotely at this time, to learn and to remember. As you can see, our school community, in partnership with Trust Schools, Lawn Manor Academy and Kingsbury Green, are taking up at least one challenge to mark Srebrenica Memorial Day. Through art, writing, their steps, silences or other means, they are coming together to understand that every action matters. So for my personal challenge, I am creating these nine short films to do my bit to inform and inspire others. In this third film, I'll be focusing on the Siege of Sarajevo, sharing a few personal reflections and comments and pointing to you to sites, resources, organisations and stories that can further your own knowledge and understanding. So let me begin with this image that we used in the first film, the beautiful, stunning city, capital city, of Sarajevo in Bosnia with a population of around 275,000. It's a real melting pot of East meets West. And in 1984, as you know, as a child, I can remember Torval and Dean winning gold for their famous Valero. It is a most remarkable city, Sarajevo. As you can see here, surrounded by hills and mountains, um, very green with its red rooftops. It's it's its minarets. It's a real mixture of uh, the history and the commerce and the river running through it and this, this beautiful scene. And three years ago I was fortunate to travel to Bosnia, to Sarajevo and to, and to some other areas too um, through remembering Srebrenica. And during that time we had an amazing guide. Uh, this is Rashad. Uh, at 19, he went overnight from being an ordinary European teenager to a soldier, defending his beloved city of Sarajevo against the longest siege in modern history. We were so fortunate to have Rashad in, as, as our guide during that visit. He talked us and walked us through his beloved streets, albeit pot-marked with the signs and ravages of war, albeit scarred and overshadowed by his wartime memories. What he told us really stuck with me. He said he described that they were anything but soldiers. They didn't have their own uniforms. He wore his dad's overalls um, when they were on the front line for six days at a time. And then when they were then they were away from the front line, they'd be trying to salvage what they could to collect clean water, find things to burn for warmth and for cooking. They were ordinary concerns that which consumed them. And that was because Sarajevo, if you go back to that image that we showed at the beginning, surrounded by those hills, was ripe during the 1990s war to be under siege, to be encircled, surrounded by Serb forces on those higher mountains for shelling, for sniper fire, for mortars. And so what happened in Bosnia, in Sarajevo, in this siege, which lasted from April the 5th, 1992 to February the 29th, 1996, was that the forces of the Bosnian army, who had declared independence from Yugoslavia, fought this battle, this ongoing battle of survival with the surrounding Serb forces and against overwhelming odds. An estimated 12,000 people were killed during this period and in this siege, and another 50,000 wounded. Um, by sniper fire, for example, exploding shells. Reports indicate an average of approximately 329 shells impacting per day during the course of the siege, and at its height, some 3,777 impacting on a specific date in 1993. The shell fire has caused extensive damage to the city structures, and you can see it in the properties as you walk around the city today. The snipers operated extensively during this period um, when water and electricity supplies were cut and many were injured or killed by trying to simply shop for bread, standing in line at the markets and so on. 
So this map is a really useful one, this visual. If you compare that to the beautiful image, the stunning image um, that we used at the start, and you can see here the idea of how the city is completely surrounded by Serb controlled hillsides and mountains. You can see that there are these areas marked out for, for special me special mention. The market massacres were clearly an area of great target. Sniper Alley where people were picked off as they as they queued or they ran for for bread or to try and navigate around the city. You see there that the UN headquarters is clearly marked. And the UN controlled the airport that you can see in the bottom left of the screen. Um, you can see what is government controlled and where the Serb entities were. So this map is really useful for helping us to consider how Sarajevo, this city enclaved by the hillside, was encircled and cut off in the longest siege in modern history. And of course, this is me peering out of a tunnel which looks like a world war one sort of trench really with the corrugated iron and the wood and this is at the airport and a tunnel that was built under the airport to bring in potentially some food supplies to help with medicines um, you know being able to smuggle them into the city in this underground tunnel um, and you can see in the building pictured how potmarked it is with bullets and, and other um, war debris and this sense of how the, the city was surrounded, this Olympic city um, during this period. So we had this opportunity while we visited to look at various sites in Sarajevo. And one of the things that also struck me is that we heard about the cellist of Sarajevo um, and this extraordinary musician who during the height of the sniper fire and the threat and in the despair of this siege, he played to keep up people's morale. He played to give people hope. He played to remind them of, of, of previous times and he played during funerals. His bravery has inspired a number of musicals, of, of, a, of a novel and, and some film documentaries. It's extraordinary what the human spirit was able to overcome um, and this visual and this story really struck me as we were going through the city um, with our tour guide Rashat. We also went to this place, the War Childhood Museum. It's a bit off the beaten track. You need to know where you're going. It's quite a small little museum. But what an inspirational and extraordinary place it is. I'm so glad we went. Um, inside, it's full of child's ordinary, everyday objects like this one. A blue, cuddly toy, a child's bunny. And this, the book that this comes from um, is from a project um, called War Childhood, which basically captured and remembered children's memories, their diary extracts, their thoughts, their feelings, their, their toys, their memories of war and conflict. And so you might look at this object and all of the others that are in the museum and think, well, what's this got to do with, with Bosnia and the war? What can it teach us? What can it reveal about that period? But I'm struck by the small notices, the, the descriptions, the explanations by each artifact. So this one says, I don't remember my brother. He was only a little bit older than me. They took him away from my mother's arms and killed him. We fled from our home without a chance to lock the door behind us. Then we lived in a refugee camp. This blue bunny was the only thing that brought me joy. Its colour and smile brightened the gloomiest days. I donated the rest of my toys, keeping only my bunny. To me, that really hit home and explained to me what the significance of this siege was on a portion of the community, the children of Sarajevo and the surrounding areas. Um, it really helped explain the impact of war and conflict and trauma that even the simplest thing like a blue bunny could take on new meaning. And as an RE teacher, I'm struck by this, a piece of fabric. Um, you might not think anything of it, but as a teacher and at a time when schools would have been preparing for end of year proms for GCSE and A-level students, 
this really hit home. A piece of fabric for a prom dress to be worn in the spring of 1992. And it says simply, the dress was never made. Again, gives you a real flavour, I think, of what was happening in Sarajevo and how this impacted upon the milestones of life, on your graduation, on your prom day, on your exams, on your weddings, your marriages, your anniversaries, funerals, all the things that we take for granted as milestones in life were impacted by war and impacted by the siege. And I was also struck by this. We were taken to a um, another museum in Sarajevo, a hard hitting, difficult place to visit about the crimes against humanity that were taking place in this period of 1992-95. And I don't want to talk or show you too much about that. Um, it's, it's suitable for visits for adults, um, perhaps less so for, for, for students. But nonetheless, I was struck by this image, a sculpture entitled a man who walked in line who waited in line for bread the sculpture of a man made of slices of bread is an artistic monument to the people who lost their lives waiting in line for bread in sarajevo this work of art is based on the horrible events from the beginning of the war when a grenade killed 26 and wounded more than 100 starved civilians who waited in line for bread on may the 27th 1992 quite a stark reminder of the importance of bread, the importance of basics and what went on when that city was encircled under fire without the necessary basics of food, water, medical aid and so on. But as an RE teacher there were other things that gave me real hope in Sarajevo and gave me um, such pride that certain cultural and religious artifacts were protect, protected and preserved despite um, the war and despite the, um, the siege. So the library, although um, destroyed and, and different things, the Sarajevo Haggadah, um, the, the synagogue and the Jewish cemetery were preserved and protected. And this tradition um, was clearly very valuable and, and part of the set of the the city's religious tolerance and its story and its history and its heritage that despite all this destruction, despite all this, this hate and this um, really toxic environment that was stirred up in the early 1990s, that this was preserved in this beautiful city um, is something to behold really. So how will you take up the personal challenge that every action matters this Srebrenica Memorial Day? 25 years on, how will you reflect on the siege of Sarajevo? How will you incorporate or honour Rashad's story and the story of those children whose lives and childhoods were so badly affected by war and conflict? There's lots of ideas here of how you can do it and we can't wait to see how you will both learn and remember uh, that every action matters on this 25th anniversary day.